So you may wonder why is it important to understand different types of tire wear? Well, it can apply to your own tires. If you go out and look at your own tires to see how the pattern of wear might be occurring can be an indication of something that you may not have optimized with your tires. Or if you find a suspect's car and match up the evidence at the crime scene with certain wear patterns of the tire and they match up, it can help strengthen a case against someone. So first off, we wanna take care when we're looking at tire alignment with a car and how that's gonna impact the wear patterns of the tire. So it's something called uh, camber, toe, and caster. So camber is referring to the inward and outward tilt of the tires as viewed from the front. Then something called toe, and this is from the side to side difference of the tire, this is the front and the back, is it toe in or toe out? You have something called caster, which is the slope of the steering axis, and that's kind of like you think of a caster uh, uh, on a shopping cart. You can notice that there's negative caster, but set forward, or positive caster there. So tire alignment can also play into the wear uh, as well. Looking specifically about the camber, this is the inward and outward tilt of the tire. So if viewed from the front, this is that inward and outward tilt. Uh, inward tilt is considered negative and outward is considered positive. So if we look kind of at the car right here, we can see it has negative camber and it has a lot of negative camber. Um, this is used to distribute the load across the entire tread, not so much in this case. Uh, improper camber can make the tire wear on one edge as probably indicated here, uh, and cause the vehicle to pull uh, to the side that has the most positive um, camber. There was something called toe, and this is referring to toe in and toe out. This is the side to side difference um, in distance between the front and rear of the front tires. So if the distance is closer at the front, it's called toe in. So we see indicated here on this race car, we toe in, and then the difference is closer. The rear, this would be called toe out. And again, this can also impact the wear. Last we have caster here as far as orientation of the tire. And the caster is the, four, um, is the fore or aft slope of the steering axis. That's referring to whether it's a negative caster or a positive uh, caster. Uh, a neutral caster would be it straight up and down. The, an example here would be the, the um, shock assembly. Positive caster is when the bottom of the steering axis is in front of the tire's contact path. And negative is, of course, the opposite. Um, so factory alignment specs for basically all vehicles call for a certain degree of positive caster because this will help ensure good stability and help maintain straight head direction with the promotion of steering wheel self-centering. So this is helps that wheel kind of naturally want to track in a straight line, which is very helpful for handling purposes. So when we're looking at our tires and we're trying to estimate the tread and where it may have worn or how much it is worn, we can use a penny or a quarter uh, using currency to estimate the tread. Simply using this penny and a quarter, the depth of the tread can be closely examined and kind of looks at the difference between when you put the penny down, how does it match up to the head of the, in the person printed on the currency there. So for example, looking at the difference between when push it down and two um, 30 seconds, the tread is legally worn in this case. So we're looking here, it's just basically touching the head of Abraham Lincoln. We flip that same penny around here and look at six 30 seconds tread. Well, that's gonna match pretty much the base stairs there of the Lincoln Monument. Uh, proper tire inflation. So when we're looking at properly inflated, we're gonna have maximum amount of contact. Underinflated, only the edges are going to be coming in contact, and overinflated, you're just going to have that middle crazy, that little kind of like that little bit of a balloon effect. So you want to refer to the vehicle's owner manual to, to owner's manual to make sure that you have the correct amount of tire inflation that's located on the door frame. This can also be checked on a suspect's car. Uh, if you take the tire pressure and then compare it to the door frame, you can have an indication of whether it was properly overly or underinflated. Um, older model cars prior to 2003 might be inside the glove box. Uh, fuel filter flap, a trunk lid, there's different locations it could be. Most though are typically found on the um, door jam area. Do not use the pressure um, indicated or molded into the tire sidewall. This indicates the pressure needed to meet the tire's fully rated load capacity, not necessarily specifically what was matched for the vehicle itself. So under and overinflated, if you get this little weird kind of symbol that shows up on the dashboard, that's an indication of typically low tire inflation. And underinflated tires um, have a higher rolling resistance, which reduces fuel economy, and they wear more rapidly. So that underinflated is gonna have this kind of wear pattern here, where there's gonna be a lot more wear on the outside sidewalls 
than in the center. However, if you overinflate a tire, the opposite occurs. Overinflation would have more wear in the middle because you've kind of got that little balloon-like effect there. Um, so this is why it's important to have proper inflation because you don't want to have these uneven wear patterns. However, in a crime scene, they can help you identify or match up a potential tire to a suspect's vehicle. This just, again, shows some more comparisons of all the different types of under-inflation uh, methods and over-inflation methods and different patch wares and cup wares, uh, just to give you some kind of model examples in comparisons, because initially they may look very similar. But if you look at them closely, you'll be able to determine the differences and hopefully identify these individual and unique wear patterns.